very much really about what's happening in, in the middle. All that we do know in the middle is that you do have these um, amphibolite lenses which are quite easy to trace. Uh, we walked up, up one yesterday uh, which run more or less north-south down towards the lake. This is the place where that first sample that came from that definitely had the silver minerals in. And you can see that it's probably something like two meters wide, maybe even a little wider here. And it's this, uh, this is very, very oxidized and rather dirty on the surface, but you can see that it's essentially carbonate. And that the carbonate is carrying these various amounts of sulfides in here. And because the, the carbonate erodes quicker than the sulfides, the sulfides are like little lumps of metal actually sticking out. Yeah, we're 70 meters further north. Yes, and 100 meters to the east, yeah? If I add it to there. the western. No, no that's, that's, it's not here. That should be the, that should be east. Around this, uh, this is more of a breccia texture here. Whereas here, you can see you have the veinlet as a, as such as uh, with the carbonate and the and the chloride, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, we do have a very nice sample that shows that probably this is, uh, and and there are you know there are uh, also. Uh, patches of, of sulfides within the basalt as such. That's, this is quite a fresh basalt, as you can see, and you see the chalcopyrite, not only the bornite and the chalcosite. So, um, yeah, I, I wonder if there is any gold in it, actually. This is the main question. In these, and, in these, in these very green rocks, often yeah. you do get gold. Yeah. Yes, and mm. the setting is as such, so normally you and look for gold. And there seems to be a fair amount of alteration in yeah. these rocks, too. You've got a in, lot of, um, this of these, probably these it's green, uh, green minerals and stuff like that. Yeah. More Which, albitic rock here, yeah, yeah also. Albite, albite uh, epidote, yeah. this anchorite and so on. And that yeah. is more suggestive of, of gold really rather than copper mm -hmm. silver. So yeah. um, it'd be worthwhile checking it out. Yeah. How deep it goes. How deep it goes. Well, I mean, yeah. this is the yeah. interesting thing because we were seeing, you know, traces of mineralization a good 1300 meters, I guess, uh, away from yeah. the added at the bottom. So it's, yeah. it, there is mineralization over at least a square kilometer on surface, mm, yeah. and if that goes down a kilometer, yeah. it's a lot of volume. Yeah. Uh, we're sitting here now in a cabin, and uh, we have been searching uh, for minerals the whole day. You've got a claims which are approximately about two square kilometers, but with a good potential that the mineralization also goes below surface. Uh, we know that the, the guys in the old days took out some, or not very much, but they took out some. Yeah. Have they missed? something really, really good? Were they working on, on not particularly good information? Were they putting their edits in the wrong direction? All this kind of thing is kind of important to know uh, before sighting drill holes. I think some of the, at least two of the drill holes that were drilled in the 60s were in the wrong position. Mm. Uh, and therefore would have missed any good mineralization. I mean, it looks like what, what we would call an orogenic yeah. deposit, which is yeah. a deposit formed basically at depth during a metamorphic mountain yeah. building episode. And the most common kind of orogenic deposit is really an orogenic gold deposit. This one appears to have quite a lot of copper, quite a lot of silver present mm. as well. Yeah. Uh, but as formed by the same kind of processes, I think there's a chance that there'll be gold. The other possibility, of course, is that it might have had gold, but the gold has actually been removed and is deposited somewhere else. That is yeah. unknown.